RFPs, as it were. It, it is so critical that we have exact language in there that really leads people to be able to either get a grant or a contract. And I, and I, I worry sometimes, that we, as we talk about all this, there is such an inconsistency in the way we do all this. It's, and it really doesn't make sense to a lot of us as to how we actually get to these ends. Congressman, at one point in my career I was a grants writer uh, as well for local governments. And it, it is a challenge when you are trying to uh, direct the resources uh, as best you can as a small entity, whether a public entity or a nonprofit, uh, to be able to best identify what the criteria is and that is going to be considered what was funded in the past, uh, what what the real goal of the grant program is in, in very specific detail. Uh, all of that information is helpful for grant writers uh, in order to best use their resources. Okay. Thank you. I would like to take a, a couple of moments just to do a few follow-up questions, and then we are going to transition to our second panel. Uh, and I do appreciate you all coming to get a chance to be here. Uh, Mr. Werfel, I want to be able to follow up on something Mr. Kelly uh, mentioned about the contracts versus grants. Uh, how comfortable are you? that the agencies are not using a grant when they should use a contract because the grant process is easier than a contracting process. But they are receiving a deliverable, whether it be a report or research report or something else, we really should be doing a contract rather than a grant on that. Are you comfortable in that? Well, I'm not a, first of all, I think there, there is um, sufficient guidance that I have used and helped advise, uh, both coming out of OMB and I think there are some uh, Comptroller General positions that are in the literature that help an agency determine whether this situation is appropriately awarded as a grant versus a contract. Um, I think Congress uh, can often be helpful there in terms of signaling its congressional intent for how the money can be spent. Right, we just had a dramatic increase in the number of grants, and I'm, I'm just trying to probe and see if yeah. you are comfortable at this point that we are not just seeing people that should be writing contracts. Yeah, writing I'm, 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 I'm not aware of any systemic issue in that area. Okay. On the, on the grants.gov uh, site, and obviously as that is building up and adding in some of the recovery.gov uh, elements into it, uh, the the self-reporting and, again, what Mr. Kelly was talking about before about trying to get into uh, the details of how it is going, but also if there is a deliverable at the end of it. So not only know that it was awarded uh, and how much it was awarded to, but if there was some report, if there was some response back to it, is it possible to have that at the end as well uh, so that Americans, whoever it may be, could look over the shoulder in the years to come and say, we, we awarded to this for this amount and this was the deliverable at the end? Absolutely. I think an important step that Congress recently took was the passage of the GPRA Modernization Act, which um, updated requirements that we have to report on performance goals. And the last time that that law was uh, enacted, I think it was first enacted in the early 90s. We obviously live in a very different world in terms of technology and how information can be provided in more real time. Our challenge right now as a Federal Government is to synthesize all these various efforts and technologies. We have more information on where the dollars are going and who is getting it than we have had before. The technologies we have to report that information and make it searchable and usable are, are good. Uh, we need to improve the quality. And as you said, we need to figure out how to find the right synergy so that when you are reading this information, you are not just learning that X and Y University got a, a grant, you are learning what the, what the impact has been. And that is really taking, I think, spending transparency to the next level, and we need right. to move in that direction. Right. And that is what we have talked about before, just a single portal. <clears throat> Excuse me for this. A single portal where people can go to be able to do their research on it. Uh, two quick things, and then we're going to switch to the next panel. But the the, the payment time period, uh, a couple have brought up on how we make payments, whether that is as we go along, or whether that is at the beginning or is at the end. Uh, I have spoken to people that are in very small communities that may be getting a grant uh, for, let's say, a water treatment to do some of the certification. That grant uh, payment comes at the end. Uh, so a very small community in a very poor area has to come up with a quarter million dollars with the promise that the Federal Government will pay at the end, but they are having to go get bank loans and to chase down and, and literally go put their, uh, their city park on collateral uh, for something that will be paid at the end uh, when the process is complete. Uh, that kind of ordering is something that I would think needs to be examined in the grant process as well. And then, Mr. Werfel, you brought up the issue of uh, trying to deal with fraud after the fact uh, by what could affectionately be called fraud bounty hunters uh, that go out there after different companies to be able to find areas where there is fraud, and then they are paid a percentage of what they find. The challenge of that and the benefit of it is obviously they are going to go find fraud. The challenge of it is they are in an adversarial role from the moment they walk through the door, that immediately when they walk through the door, 
whatever entity that they are evaluating with, they are going to be paid if they find something wrong. And so they are going to stay until they find something wrong. And uh, that puts every single grant recipient at a very difficult position uh, because you will have human error at some point and they will stay until they find it. And now you have an adversarial role. Instead of the Federal Government being your ally, now suddenly the Federal Government is your enemy uh, walking through your doors. Instead of serving that company, uh, we are now at odds with them based on a bounty hunter that we said is going to go find something. Uh, so we have to be able to resolve that process because I have numerous people back in the district that are very frustrated with those companies that step in that they know are paid to find the issues and they will stay until they do, no matter how small, and they will find them to the max that they can possibly do it. So that is just an issue we are going to need to work through in the days to come. And with that, do you have a further comment? Uh, Dr. If I could just add, um, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I want to reemphasize just as we are looking for transparency and accountability on the receiving end of grants, I think Ms. Keegan's testimony really underscores we got to look at the possibility of waste uh, at the front end. Um, some more accountability, if not standardization, within the Federal family uh, may very well help us reduce improper payments at the front end rather than having to collect them at the receiving end. Thank you. And with that, I thank this panel very much for not only the time that you spend in preparing your written statements, but coming here for the oral uh, statements and your questioning as well. We will now take a short recess so we can transition to our second panel.